through the church sanctions, they were given the ability to deal in money lending in essentially the banking traditions that are being used today. It is with no great stretch of the imagination that we can suggest that the Knights Templar may very likely have begun many of the banking institutions of Europe and that they funded and underwrote some of the families because in the normal course of events, families with great wealth can find themselves teetering on insolvency and it was the Templar Knights who came to their rescue. Over the hundreds of years of their existence, 200 years, they were able to become an extraordinary power. They were able to manipulate the purse strings of the European community. However, something very odd occurred with the Templar Knights because towards the end of their existence, they were accused of heinous charges. Some of the more outrageous claims made against them is that they trampled on the crucifix and that they spat on the image of Jesus hanging from the cross. Philip the Fair, King of France, with a pope who was beholding to him, bribed some knights who were in prison, ex-knights, and through devious and totally false charges, was able to bring the Templar Knights down. The accusations flew, and the Templars were undone. Why would a society created to protect pilgrims, whose very oath in the beginning pledged allegiance to the Holy Mother Mary, whose entire existence began in service to the Christian Church, why would they deny the very existence of Jesus and the crucifixion. I again suggest the works I had uh, mentioned earlier and our efforts in a book we call The Second Coming Conspiracy because it is apparent that the Templar Knights in the Temple of Solomon and in returning to Europe, it is apparent that they uncovered the existence of the offspring of Jesus. Now I say that hesitatingly because our present research suggests that this was not a new discovery but that in fact they became aware very early on of the existence of the Holy Grail of the children of Jesus. If the Templar Knights knew that Jesus had not been crucified, if they knew that the offspring were alive and well, it explains very, very clearly why they would deny the crucifix, why they would protest against the Christian church. The history between the church and the Templars was not kind to either one. The Templars interfered oftentimes with masses that were being conducted in the church. They oftentimes ignored the edicts of the Pope, and the Pope seemed powerless to do anything against them. There is extremely strong evidence to show that the Templar Knights knew that Jesus was not crucified and that his offspring were alive and well. Approximately two months ago, I received some material in the mail from an individual who wanted me to comment on the works. It was material that was not available in the United States. It was about the Templar Knights. I have always been curious about the Templars and the charges uh, levied against them and the possibility that they had evidence that Jesus had not died on the cross. They had always intrigued me. I had not spent a great deal of time on them because they seemed to be one of those groups that, while they seemed to play a part in the, the uh, European community, they did not have as big a part in the world affairs and world history, or so I thought. I received the material, and I began to examine it carefully. One of the things that most excited me about this new material was about a very mysterious head that the Templar Knights are supposed to have possessed. 
One of the charges levied against the Templars was that they possessed and oftentimes revered a head, a head that was known as Baphomet. (coughs) Pardon me. The name Baphomet has plagued authors and researchers for years. There have been numerous suggestions that uh, Baphomet might refer to Mohammed and uh, several other possibilities. In the charges levied against the Templar Knights, Baphomet is described as having been a bearded man's head. When the Inquisition took the Knights to task, they took an inventory of the Grand Lodge. And in the inventory, there was a very curious description of a tiny silver replica of a head. It was known as Caput, and in Roman numbers, 58, with a little curious M attached. That is the only clue that has been presented to researchers throughout history. I had always wondered, who is this head? What was the purpose? What was the identity? Could it have been a true shrunken head? Not likely. This new material that was submitted to me provided some linguistic clues and some evidence that we did not have. I was invited to produce an eight-page article to present in the European community. However, the, the story took on a life of its own. In a very short period of time, 60 pages materialized from this new work. I reduced the 60 pages to 40, hoping that in some fashion perhaps the story could be serialized in Europe because I knew that it would not be able to be released in the United States. I submitted the 40 pages and the package never arrived. A few days later, I was involved in a hit and run accident. I would like to believe it was an accident. I do not think so. I believe that our recent effort has disturbed the powers that be. I hope I am wrong. I truly do. But what I am suggesting in our work, the second coming conspiracy, is that the family of Jesus, the royal offspring, will very shortly stage a second coming. It is my belief that they are manipulating world events and the actual fulfillment of ancient prophecies to their advantage. It is my suggestion that over the course of the next few years, there will be assassinations, suicides, and natural death of people who are power players on the world stage. I am going to suggest that we are going to find families like the royal family in England whose prince is going to be undone. I believe that families like the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds are going to find their heirs apparent, the males who would very likely be candidates for the the power of the planet. I believe that they are going to lose their sons. I suggest that over the next few years, we're going to find the loss of the males of the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the Vatican, the King of England, excuse me, the Queen of England, and even in the United States. I believe a second coming is being prepared. In the Holy Blood, Holy Grail, in all of the books which I have listed, they themselves are very, very disturbed by the way that the material is being released on the genealogy of Jesus Christ. It appears that they, as if they are being led to the conclusion that the Holy Family is alive and well. I find myself in the same position. Let us return for a moment to the possibility that Jesus did not exist. If that is true, then the genealogy which is being presented is false. It is fake. Could that be? 
Could the powers that be create a genealogy that simply does not exist? Most certainly. We have evidence in the past that the Holy Roman Church, in fact, falsified documents. We know that our government and governments in Europe have, are guilty of the very, very same tactic. I believe a scenario is being staged, it is being prepared, in which we as a planet are going to see the return of a divinity, of a son of God. My fear is, the evidence suggests, it is a false messiah. At this moment, I would like to take time and thank my wife and my daughter for whom all of this research and effort is about. I am very proud of my family, and I am proud of those who I have brought into my adopted family. We are working hard and are trying to tell the story. It is disturbing. Controversial is not strong enough. We do not wish to undermine your faith. We don't want to take away your religion. If it is strong, keep it. But for those of you who are seeking the truth, we ask for an opportunity to simply present our books for you to consider. We have four books available at this moment. We have several videotapes and audio tapes, but the core of our work consists of four books. The first book is known as the Star Warrior Papers. It is the story of the six young Native American men who rescued an extraterrestrial in 1947. Our research was inspired by the stories of one of the individuals who rescued the star beam. The story tells of... A